and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. As you can see, the vehicle behind me is not the typical sort of car that I test drive on Fully Charged. It's slightly upmarket, let's say that. This is, in fact, the Porsche Panamera SE Hybrid. This is a plug-in hybrid Porsche. Now, it is quite an extraordinary car because it is a big vehicle, as you can see. It's a four-seater luxury sports car. It does have a three-litre six-cylinder petrol engine, but it also has a 95 horsepower electric motor and a nine kilowatt hour battery. It is a proper plug-in hybrid. This car will do around about 20 miles on just electric power. Uh, you can recharge the battery almost to full when you're driving from the engine. The engine will charge the battery as well. Uh, it has a top speed of about 160 miles an hour, which obviously you're going to be using when you're driving down to the supermarket. But I'm really intrigued by it. I think it's extraordinary that they've done this. It, it, it has the potential, according to Porsche, to do extraordinary MPG. I mean, really ridiculous off the scale, very low CO2 emissions coming from a huge car with massive exhaust pipes and huge tyres and huge butch brakes. I mean, how is it going to work? So I think the only way to find out is to take it for a drive. So slightly unlike the Tesla, you do have to do something with the key. You actually have to put it in a slot, put your foot on the brake and turn it. And then, oh, stuff happens. <laughs> the vehicle is moving. <laughs> wow. So this is, uh, not only is this the first time I've driven a plug-in hybrid Porsche, this is the first time I've driven a Porsche, full start. In fact, this is the first time I've even been inside a Porsche. I've seen them, I know what they are, but I've never actually driven one. In pure electric mode, it'll go up to about 80 miles an hour before the petrol engine kicks in. So we're still doing, I've used the petrol engine a couple of times since I've been driving, and it's, it, we're still doing 141 miles to the gallon. Now I think that's going to, obviously going to drop considerably once the batteries are depleted. Uh, and one of the other things about this car is you can actually charge the batteries to virtually full without plugging it in when you're driving. Now, clearly what that does is it uses a lot more petrol. Um, but if you're driving, say, on a motorway and you're going downhill and you were to put it onto e-charge, there's a button here that says e-charge, that the, the, the road speed and the engine and the, your, your motion will charge the battery. And it does charge it quite impressively. I mean, it does definitely go back up. So what is intriguing about this, and I'm trying to, uh, to kind of sense it as I'm driving along, uh, in some uh, plug-in hybrids, certainly I know the Volvo does this, they've got a completely separate electric motor that, for, for instance, drives the back wheels, whereas the petrol engine drives the front or however they've done it. In this car, the, the uh, electric motor is part of the same drivetrain. So the, the power from the electric motor is going through the same uh, transmission system to the wheels which means it changes gear and it has a, a, a very cool gearbox that all the Porsche uh, sports cars have. It's got, it's got two clutches, not just one clutch, we've got two. Which is why the gear changing is it on, really only really notable from looking at the little indicator on the, on the dash there. I, can't, I can barely sense it, I mean, I'm in first now on pure electric and now it's in second. I, what I love about it is that the technology is invisible. You know, you're just driving basically. I mean, I'm rattling on about it at the moment because I'm interested in all this stuff, but you know, you wouldn't really know if you were driving it. Now, I'd imagine that a lot of people who would buy this car are not buying it and, and they wouldn't drive it the way I'm driving it because I'm driving it in your classic old Vicar uh, hybrid car owner style. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm being very gentle on the throttle and I haven't really pushed it at all, but uh, you know, clearly this car will go like stink but there is this other button. I'll just press it now, and this is called sport mode. I have no idea what that does. So now it's on sport mode. Lots of red lights have come on, which are all sort of traction control, but yeah, in fact, the petrol engine still hasn't started up, but I haven't um, encouraged the vehicle to go faster. Oh, right, it's very, very instant. <laughs> I think that's called the kick in the pants. And now it's changing gear in a different way as well. There's some interesting uh, aspects to the throttle. So if I push my foot hard, like hard down, it goes to there, and then there's a click, and that happens, and then there's another click where that happens, <laughs> and it starts to really shift. And it feels very solid on the road. Amazing, amazing. Those Porsche blokes, <laughs> they don't muck about. I think that's, I'm prepared to state that this vehicle has what is often referred to in a male uh, company as Welly. <laughs> it has some Welly. That is fascinating. 
So the last time I looked at the MPG, it was 156 MPG, because uh, I'd been driving sensibly in a pure electric mode. It is now at 57. <laughs> So, uh, as you can imagine, you could get this car down, you could really burn through a lot of petrol in this vehicle if you wanted to. But I think that is interesting, that you could, and in an ordinary Porsche Panamera, you will. There's no question of it, that's what you're going to do. Whereas in this, you don't actually have to. But, you know, I think it is interesting that they've gone to the trouble to work out this technology. And clearly, I, I see it, this is becoming more and more common. It will be more common to have a car that does this, even an ordinary, sensible family car that, that is basically, essentially a plug-in hybrid. That stuff is going to catch on much quicker than pure electrics. But a lot of people will try this first and then realise that, you know, the next step will be pure electric. But... That is nice. That is... I'm trying to maintain a kind of mature, butch, you know, jutting chinned attitude to the, oh, sorry, to the, when I accelerate and all I do is start giggling. But what's obvious is if you say you had one of these and you're really posh and you park it in your posh garage at night and you plug it in and you drive, say, 15 miles to work in your posh office uh, and then you drive, and you can plug it in your office and you drive back, you could drive this car hundreds and hundreds of miles without using any petrol at all which has to be a bit of an advantage. And from what I understand of the legislation that's currently working its way through uh, city authorities all across Europe, uh, certainly across Europe and in many other countries and other, other cities, is the, the concept of the zero emission zone. And that's really what these cars are being developed for. And that's going to be introduced in the next five, 10 years, that the center of a city will be a zero emission zone. No uh, combustion engines are allowed to, to be driven in them. And that's for local area pollution you know for human beings for us it's not to do with polar bears it's to do with human beings who breathe in very toxic fumes and this car has the potential so you could roar down the autobahn 160 miles an hour using petrol because you can switch it there's a plethora of buttons so you could run it just as a pure petrol car till you get to the edge of the uh, zero emission zone then you press e power and you drive in the city using no petrol at all which has got to be i think quite a good thing well, now I can give a little bit of a final assessment of the fantastically fabulous Porsche Panamera SE Hybrid. OK, so this morning the batteries are fully charged. I left London very, very early in the morning to drive up here to Donington Park to the launch of the Formula E racing uh, cars, all the cars that are surrounding us now. And uh, it was fantastic because I drove all the way out of London, right the way up onto the M1, so probably 22 miles-ish, I reckon, uh, just on electric power. So I didn't use any petrol in London at all. Then we went onto the motorway and we were in a bit of a rush. I'll be, I'll be fair, but, uh, but, but I'm a very law-abiding driver. I didn't go over the speed limit, but the final mileage was less than staggeringly impressive. It was about 50 miles to the gallon. For a long time, it was closer to 60, but as we got a bit nearer and we were getting later, I went a little bit faster, used a bit more petrol. It would be very hard on a long journey to get the kind of uh, mileage that uh, Porsche seemed to be claiming for this. I can't imagine getting 90 miles to the gallon out of it because it is a big, big car and it goes very, very fast, very, very quickly. It's very, very easy to get a little bit right foot heavy. So in terms of <laughs> genuine economic sort of family car, it's absurd. But I would imagine that a, that a, a pure petrol version of this is going to use a hell of a lot more petrol than that. So it does use less petrol. It does give you the opportunity to drive in city centres without running the petrol engine. I guess that's a good thing. If you're going to buy a great big petrol car, get one of these if you've got that kind of money. That's about it. <laughs>